uh, from Facebook, there's a question about how we might integrate emptiness and luminosity and ideas of Buddha nature with politics, with strategies, public policy development. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have any comments on that, uh, but several people uh, are asking about that. I don't know, I mean, that's a, that's a tricky one. Um, but generally there are important general lessons that we can take from teachings on both sides. For example, from the emptiness side, um, one of the key messages that is coming out of emptiness is to don't trust too much in your thoughts. Because we, you know, often a lot of our sort of anger and sense of kind of, you know, rightness uh, comes from the fact that we are deluded. So emptiness teaching is pointing out that the way in which we see the world to a large extent is a construct of our own mind and our biases. So I think just taking that into account is helpful, especially even in politics, which involves complicated human relationships, then being able to constantly ask, am I seeing, looking at the situation in the right way? Is there something that I'm bringing because of my own biases? So those are, I mean, of course, I'm not saying that's a practice of emptiness, but that's important lesson being brought from emptiness, constantly asking the question, you know, what is it that I'm bringing into a situation that is not there? What, are there elements that are being brought in because of who I am, because of my biases? That I think is an important one. From the Buddha nature side, in complex relationship, particularly in the political and administrative section, where we are, you know, often, put in a situation where we have to disagree with people and you know dealing with disagreements and diverse opinions is an important part of even leadership skill again there coming and taking important lessons from the buddha nature teaching where you know the perfect seed for perfection and seed for buddhahood is present in all beings and that can also be a powerful factor for recognizing shared humanity you know, shared common, com, common humanity, because just as I wish to be happy, this person wishes to be happy, just as I do not want suffering, this person does not want suffering. And recognizing that basic, not forgetting the basic humanness of the other person, then helps you actually have a much better attitude and state of mind in dealing with, even in a difficult situation. So there are clearly, I'm not saying that's the Buddha nature teaching, but what I'm saying is there are important lessons that can be taken from these teachings and brought even in everyday reality where on the surface, it seems they're totally unconnected. I just want to add to what Geshe has just shared. Um, when um, uh, we've discussed the purpose of Buddha nature teachings in the Ratnagotra Vivaga, the ultimate continuum, um, there are five purposes given. And, uh, I think two would be very relevant to politicians. <laughs> the one is really uh, belittling others, no? Yeah. Sort of uh, looking down on your opponents or people uh, who are different. And so I think uh, Buddha nature is definitely, or understanding that everyone has Buddha nature definitely would help get over sort of supremacist thinking, yeah. bigotry, discrimination. And then the, another one is saying, but the nature teachings help you get over self-love and self-attachment. <laughs> if you're yeah. too arrogant and <laughs> too sure. puffed with pride, <laughs> sure, uh, sure, see sure. everyone having the same. Uh, so sure. uh, um, I think um, it's very clearly in the Radnagotra Vibhaga, these sort of purposes. Yeah, of yeah. Nature yeah. And also mm -hmm. one of the uh, purposes that was pointed or benefits that has been pointed out in the text is giving a sense of confidence and courage. Because often, you know, we feel down and we feel discouraged and demoralized. And then the Buddha nature teaching tells us that we have the capacity even to become a Buddha. I mean, that is an ambitious, you know, kind of suggestion. So if we can, if we have the potential and the capacity to become even a Buddha, then of course, we, will, we should be able to, you know, have the capacity to overcome all sorts of problems. So giving that courage and confidence is also an important part of that.